Good morning. Welcome to Victoria's Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We're talking about how to live and not die. And our text scripture is Psalm 118, 17. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And this week we are talking about our covenant of protection. And for the last several days, I've been going through with you several scriptures in the Old Testament and the New Testament that promise us protection from danger. And these are our covenant promises for protection. And then yesterday, just before we ran out of time, we started looking at Psalm 91. So let's go back to Psalm 91 and we'll start there again today. In Psalm 91, verse 1, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And verse 2 says, I will say. And if you have your Bible open, I encourage you to underline and circle those words. I will say. Remember the law of the creative power of words. Words are powerful. Words release our faith and words exercise our spiritual authority. And so it's important what you say. Psalm 91, 2 again, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Praise the Lord. And so we see that a very important part of receiving protection is by saying of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. You see Psalm 91, as we're going to go through it and read the whole thing verse by verse, it covers our protection. It is a powerful Psalm for our protection, but it starts by showing us how to receive that protection, how to activate the protection shield. And it is by believing and saying that the Lord is your refuge and your fortress. And yesterday, I took you again also back to Psalm 18, verses 2 and 3. It says, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock. In whom I take refuge. He is my shield. And the horn of my salvation. My stronghold. I call to the Lord. Who is worthy of praise. And I am saved from my enemies. Notice that the psalmist is saying. The Lord is my rock my fortress, my deliverer, my salvation, my shield, my refuge, my stronghold. In him I am saved. And that is very much a major key to being protected. Because just like you confess Jesus is your Lord and Savior, and then you receive new birth, you must also believe and confess he is your protector, deliverer, shield, fortress, refuge. And in confessing him as your deliverer, your shield, you receive his protection. The same is true for receiving healing. You need to confess the Lord is my healer. That's the name Jehovah Rapha. When the Lord said, I am the Lord who heals you. Well, for you to receive his healing, you need to say, the Lord is my healer. The Lord is my healer. And then you receive him as your healer. 
Same as with your provision. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who sees and provides. You have to say, believe in your heart and say, the Lord is my provider. He's my provider. Then that activates the covenant of provision. He is my healer. That activates the covenant of healing. He is my protector, my deliverer, my shield, my refuge. Then that activates the covenant of protection. And so you say of the Lord, he is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my refuge, my shield, my salvation, my stronghold. And in him, I am saved from my enemies. Praise the Lord. And so let's go back to Psalm 91. He, the first verse again, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. That dwelling is to live and abide permanently. It is not running in and running out, coming in and going out of the Lord's protection, the Lord's provision. It's not following him some of the time when you feel like it. And then other times you're too busy for the Lord and you don't think about the Lord and you don't listen to the Lord. No, you have to dwell there in him every day. You dwell in him. That means you seek him. That means you listen to him. That means you seek his word. That means you desire to hear his voice and do his will. Dwelling in him is to be a permanent place, not once in a while, occasionally, when you feel like it, when you have time, you give some time to God. But the rest of the time, you're too busy for the Lord. No, if you're too busy for the Lord, you are not dwelling in the she- she- the secret place in the shelter of the Most High. If you are not dwelling in the Lord by every day, listening, spending time, with him, listening to him, hearing him, obeying him, seeking him, then, and you only do it occasionally, then you are not dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. That dwelling is a 24 hour a day, seven day a week position of seeking him, resting in him, looking to him, loving him, hearing him. Obeying him. Praise the Lord. So that's verse one. Verse one is dwelling. That's a secret. Dwelling in the secret place. That's important. It's not running in and out. It's staying there. Abiding there. 24 seven. And then verse two is another key. Saying of the Lord. He is my refuge. My fortress. My God. In him I trust. And then. Verse three, I want to read this part in the Good News Bible, today's English version, Good News Bible. It's some, it uses simple English and it's very clear. So starting with Psalm 91, verse three, in the Good News translation, verse three, He will keep you safe from all hidden dangers. That's things you don't see. There's a lot of things in the world that you don't see, but they can hurt you. But the Lord will keep you safe from those hidden dangers and from all deadly diseases. That's what the pestilences are. Pestilences in the King James, it is deadly diseases, infectious diseases. And so that includes Ebola. That includes other viruses that 
would be spread that are deadly. And then verse four, he will cover you with his wings. You will be safe in his care. And, and I want us to see there in verse four, he will cover you with his wings. You will be safe in his care. That is similar to verse one, where it says, shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. What do we see similar in the word shadow and under his wings, or as the King James or some other translations say feathers, but the feathers that represents the wings of a mother bird, a mother bird protecting her little birdies under her wings and and she draws them under her wings and covers them with her wings the, her wings cover over the little birdies to protect them from harm and if they will stay under her wings they can be safe i remember hearing a story about um a mother chicken and the little chicks the little chicks were running all around squeaking and squawking and and then there was a fire and the mother hen drew her chicks under her wings and she kept them covered under her wings the fire sad to say burned the mother hen the hen was killed but when they went through the ashes of the fire after the fire was gone out and they came to this mother hen the mother hen was scorched and burnt and but they picked up the mother hen and under the mother hen's wings the little chicks were still alive the the little chicks were still alive that the mother hen had protected her chicks she died but they were they lived they were spared because they stayed under her wings and it's the same idea in verse 1 abiding shall abide under the shadow of the almighty what is a shadow it's a covering it's a covering and so what would have happened to a little chick if that chick did not go to its mother? If it was running around as a little independent chick, independent little chick doesn't want to get under mother's wings. Well, then that little chick would have been burnt to a crisp. But by running to mother and hiding under mother's wings, that little chick was saved. God is like the mother hen, the mother bird. There are many scriptures where it talks about the Lord like a mother hen or a mother bird drawing, wanting to draw you under his wings. But you've got to come to him and you've got to abide in him and you've got to listen to him. We're going to get more to that later because that is very important. That is an important part of receiving protection. So your protection is in abiding in him, dwelling under his wings, staying under his shadow or his cover. And so back to verse four, good news translation. He will cover you with his wings. You will be safe in his care. His faithfulness will protect and defend you. You need not fear any dangers at night or sudden attacks during the day. Sudden attacks during the day. That includes terrorist attacks. And when I finish this, I'll share with you, there are even many testimonies 
about 9-11, terrorist attack on the Twin Towers. Let me come back to that after I finish reading Psalm 91. But it says in verse 5, You need not fear any dangers at night or sudden attacks during the day. Verse 6, Or the plagues that strike in the dark, or the evils that kill in daylight. Verse 7, A thousand may fall dead beside you. 10,000 all around you. Now, 10,000, that's like a small town. A whole town can fall dead beside you. The next line says, but you will not be harmed. But you will not be harmed. 10,000 fall dead all around you, but you will not be harmed. You know, there are a lot of Christians who are so ignorant of these scripture promises and covenant of protection. And they look at people who get hurt. And then they look at us who believe in protection. And us who confess Psalm 91. And I've heard this said about people that will believe Psalm 91. And someone would accuse them and say, well, what makes you think you're more special than everybody else. It has nothing to do with special. Absolutely nothing. It's not about special. It's not about favoritism. I don't believe I'm better than anyone else. It is not about who you are. It is about what do you believe and confess. It's all about what do you believe and confess. It's not that we think that we're more special than everybody and therefore God will save us. Absolutely not. We know the truth is that in ourselves, we are nothing. But in him, we have his promises and those promises are activated by faith and confession. By believing and saying them. And therefore, it is th the reason people die is because they didn't believe, even Christians. Believing in God is not the same as believing in protection. Believing in God is not the same as believing God will deliver you from harm. They're not the same. You can be a Christian, you can s believe Jesus Christ is raised from the dead and still not believe that you're protected from all danger. You have to believe you're protected and believe the scripture and say the scripture. It is activating these promises that makes them work for you. And so back to verse seven, a thousand may fall dead beside you. 10,000 all around you, but you will not be harmed. It doesn't matter if the whole town is drops dead. You will not be harmed. Verse eight, you will look and see how the wicked are punished. Verse nine, you have made the Lord your Defender, the most high, your protector. Notice this. This is so important. Verse nine, verse nine. Now in the King James and in the, some other translations, it says, if you make the Lord, the most high, your dwelling, the Lord, your refuge. So there is an if you make him your refuge, your defender, your protector. He does not make him self your refuge. You make him. It's the same with salvation. He has, yes, he died. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He made salvation available to you 
giving you the opportunity to be saved, to be born again, and to receive him as your savior. But he does not make himself your savior to make you be saved. No, you make him your savior. You receive him as your savior. It's the same with protection and healing and provision. He does not make himself your protector, except that he provides it. He makes it available. He said, I will be your deliverer, but you make him your deliverer. You make him your refuge. You make him, you do it. You confess him as your refuge. You confess him as your deliverer. You confess him as your defender. You confess him as your protector. You make him that in your life through faith and by saying and calling him your defender, protector, your refuge, your deliverer, your shield. Hallelujah. So verse nine, if you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge. So you make him. And as it says in the good news translation, you have made, well, let me put, if you have made the Lord, your defender, the most high, your protector. If you have made him that, if you have made him that in your life, verse 10, then, then, the NIV says, then no harm will befall you. That's a flat out direct statement. No harm will befall you. Period. Then no harm will befall you. And no disaster will come near your tent. That's the NIV. Go back to the Good News Bible. No disaster will strike you. That's floods, fires, tornadoes, hurricanes, droughts, plagues, pestilences, terrorist attacks. No disaster will strike you. No violence will come near your home. Verse 11. For God will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. That is the NIV. The good news says God will put his angels in charge of you to protect you wherever you go. Hallelujah. But I like to the, the uh, uh, NIV King James, he will command his angels to guard you. Praise the Lord. The angels are commanded, assigned to guard you in all your ways. Glory to God. Verse 12. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. The good news says they will hold you up with their hands to keep you from hurting your feet on the stones. You will trample down lions and snakes. Fierce lions and poisonous snakes. Verse 14. God says, I will save those who love me and will protect those who acknowledge me as Lord. Those who acknowledge me as Lord. And you can also say as deliverer, as defender, as shield. As protector. Verse 15. When they call to me, I will answer them. When they are in trouble, I will be with them. I will rescue them and honor them. I will reward them with long life. I will save them. Now that is Psalm 91, 16. We, we said, you need to live until you're satisfied with long life. Will I satisfy 
him and show him my salvation. God has promised to protect you. He has promises for protection. Let me say it that way. It's not just automatic. Whatever you do, you'll just be protected anyway. No, 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 it doesn't work. He has protection available. You have to, for one, dwell in the secret place of the Most High. That seeking Him 24 hours, seven days a week, that means you just love Him. You abide in Him. You stay under the shadow of His wings. You seek Him and love Him. And you listen to His voice. You follow Him. And then you say of the Lord... He is your refuge, fortress, your deliverer. You make him, verse 9, you make him your refuge. You make him your defender. You make him your protector. And then he is that to you when you have made him that to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Will I pray over you right now? Father God, I pray for supernatural protection and deliverance upon every person right now who is listening to my voice and to this program. I pray that you guard them, cover them with your blood, surround them with their angels, your angels as they're coming in and going out. They're protected in Jesus name. Amen. Join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.